So, good afternoon. So, in the last class, we have discussed about uh, the process of evaporation and also the process of evapotranspiration and how it can be estimated, estimated by using the evaporation pan and also by using some empirical formulas also we can estimate the, the rate of evaporation or the amount of water loss to the atmosphere through the process of evaporation. Now in today's class, we shall discuss about some of the numerical problems in order to estimate the lake evaporation or reservoir evaporation. Now, so here we have a problem. So the average water spread area that are likely to be maintained during the operation of a reservoir after its completion and the absorbed monthly pan evaporation at a proposed reservoir sites are given below. Now from January to December, the average water spread area that is exposed to the atmosphere, it is given in hectares and the corresponding pan evaporation in centimeters are given in each of this month from right from January to December. Now estimate the annual evaporation loss from the reservoir and the answer should be expressed in million meter cube. And if 75% of this loss can be prevented and the water thus saved is utilized to irrigate a crop of, with a requirement of 57 centimeters of water, how much area can be irrigated and assume a suitable pan coefficient value as 0.75. So now here uh, a large reservoir is given and these are the corresponding water spread area in different months and also the pan operation values in different months. And we have to calculate uh, how much uh, water is required to irrigate an area, irrigate that a particular area. So the depth of water required is about 57 centimeters of water. So how much area can be irrigated and assume a suitable pan coefficient of 0 0.70. Now we shall go with the solution part. So now these are the computation of reservoir operation losses. So the month Jan to December and the average water spread area in hectares is given here, already given. And the third column where is monthly operation data is also given to you. So now uh, in the fourth column, you have to multiply the column three values by pan coefficient values so that you will get the column four values. So next monthly operation loss in hectare centimeters. So here the operation values are given in centimeters. So you have to calculate monthly operation loss in hectare centimeter. So that is nothing but a product of column two and column four values. So you'll get the monthly operation losses in hectare centimeters. So that works out to be sigma works out to be some uh, one lakh, 11 lakh, okay, one lakh, 39,899.16. Now this is the amount of uh, water loss to the atmosphere through the process of evaporation that is sigma that is uh, 1,39,899 multiplied by, so the area, area is in hectares, so 10 power four. So one hectare is equal to 10 to the power of four meters square. So since the values are in centimeters, so it has to be converted into meters. So one divided by 100. So on simplification, we will get the volume of water, volume of water lost to the atmosphere through the process of the operation that is about uh, 11.4 million meter cube. Now, the depth of irrigation required, the depth of irrigation for that particular crop required from the uh, reservoir is about 57 centimeter, that is about 0.57 meter. So, the area of the crop that can be irrigated with this is 11.4 million meter cube divided by 0.57. So, that works out to be 20. 2000 hectares, 2000 hectares. So these types of problems you may have in the examination. Only thing is you have to calculate the, how much area can be irrigated from the reservoir considering the evaporation losses. So next, one more problem you have. During a daily routine observation, 10.58 liters of water was added to bring the water surface 
in the operation plan to its original mark or stipulated level and nearby rain gauge measured 3.6 millimeters of rainfall what was the operation recorded for that day if the diameter of the pan is about 122 centimeters so here you have a floating pan and uh, about 10.8 liters of water is required to bring back the water level to the stipulated level and in the same day rain has occurred and it is measured as 3.6 millimeters of rainfall now first you calculate the area of the pan so since it is uh, circular so pi d square by 4 so you'll get the area of the pan now volume of water added is 10.8 liters or 10,800 centimeter cube so next you can calculate the depth of water added that is volume divided by area so you get the depth of water now the rainfall occurred in that particular day is about 3.6 millimeter that is 0.3 centimeter so then the operation so nothing but the depth of water added plus whatever the rainfall has taken place and it, it is about 12.84 millimeters so these types of problems also you may have in the examination now next you have one more problem what is the evaporation if 4.75 liters of water is removed from an evaporation pan of diameter 1.22 meters and the simultaneous rainfall measured is 8.8 millimeters so now area of the pan similarly volume of water removed here in this case volume of water is removed from the evaporation pan now the depth of water removed is about that is 4.06 millimeter so the net evaporation is nothing but whatever the rainfall that has taken place 8.8 .8 minus the depth of water removed so that works out to be the value of the evaporation that is 4.74 millimeters so these are some of the problems where you have the pan evaporation values and uh, you, have, you can easily calculate the amount of evaporation that has taken place so now uh, let us uh, discuss one problem wherein we will be using all the empirical equations empirical equations so generally the mayer's equations and royer's equations are also used to calculate the evaporation from large water body or a reservoir so now the following meteorological data pertain to a large reservoir with a water spread area of about 15 kilometers square and the data represents the average values for that particular day now the water temperature is about 24 degrees centigrade and the air temperature is about 26 degrees centigrade and the atmospheric pressure is given that is in terms of mercury 752 millimeters of mercury and the wind speed measured at a height of 0.5 meter above ground level is given it is 25.3 kilometers square now the relative humidity is also given that is about 46 percent sorry now um, here estimate the average daily evaporation from the reservoir and also the evaporation losses from the reservoir for a period of one week using different empirical formulas now here we have many formulas like one one is Fitzgerald equation so it is not included in your syllabus and this Harton's equation this Harton's equation also we can calculate the evaporation from the reservoir in a week and next we can also have this Mayer's equation Mayer's equation and also the last one is the Rover's equation so the lake mean equation and the other equations are not included in the syllabus now we shall uh, discuss this problem so here uh, till uh, these values are given to you estimate the average daily evaporation from the reservoir and also the evaporation losses from the reservoir for a period of one week using different empirical formulas now in the solution part so these values will be given to you the saturation vapor pressure corresponding to the water temperature of 24 degrees here the water temperature is 24 degrees so the saturation vapor pressure at the temperature of water is given from the standard table 
so that is at 24 degrees it is about 29.831 millibars so 1 millibar is equal to 1 divided by 1.33 millimeters of mercury so directly we can uh, convert this millibar into um, millimeters of mercury so this value will be given or else uh, the vapor pressure in millibars will be given so this divided by 1.33 directly will get the 22.43 millimeters of mercury in terms of mercury will get so similarly the saturation vapor pressure corresponding to the air temperature of 26 degrees given that is 33.608 millibars or it is 25.27 millimeters of mercury now these values can be directly calculated if the millibar values are given directly so this divided by 1.3 3 will give you the values at the temperature of water and temperature of air. Now, so the, it, the definition of relative humidity, relative humidity is nothing but it is the actual vapor pressure in the air divided by the saturation vapor pressure at the air temperature, air temperature. So this is the definition of relative humidity. So it is called as RH, relative humidity. It is the ratio of actual vapor pressure in air divided by saturation vapor pressure at the air temperature. Now, so here relative humidity is given to us, that is about 46%. So 0.46, so we can call actual vapor pressure in A, A as E suffix A, that divided by the saturation vapor pressure at the temperature of A. So we have already calculated this value. So 25.27. So the actual vapor pressure that is ea ea is works out to be 11.62 millimeters of mercury so now the saturation vapor pressure is this one that is es is 20 es is 22.43 millimeters of mercury now we have the actual vapor pressure and the saturation vapor pressure now we shall calculate the amount of water loss from the reservoir surface to the atmosphere in a particular week. Now, first we shall uh, discuss this Hartan's equation. So Hartan's equation is the form E is equal to 0.4 psi into Es minus Ea. So this function, so this is a functional function of velocity and it is given by the equation is It is given by the equation 2 minus e to the power of minus 0.124 times the velocity. 0.124 times the velocity. So this you can calculate. That is 2 minus e to the power of 0.124 into the velocity is given here 25.3 kilometers per hour. So now if you substitute this in equation so you get the value of this function so finally you can calculate the evaporation value that is 0.14 times this function value will get 1.9566 multiplied by es es is nothing but the saturation vapor pressure that is 22.43 we have calculated here minus es minus the actual vapor pressure so that is 11.62 times mercury so thereby you'll get the value of the evaporation is 12.9 millimeters per day now evaporation for one week for the whole one week it is 7 into 12.91 divided by 1000 converted into meter so since the area is given area area of the reservoir is about 15 kilometers square so thereby you will get the value as so 7 into 12.91 divided by 1000 into 15 into 10 power 6. So that works out to be 1.356 into 10 power 6 million meter cube or 1.356 million meter cube. So by Hutton's equation, you can calculate the operation. So next is uh, you have the Mayer's equation. So Mayer's equation we have already discussed in the last class. So it is on the form E is equal to capital C into ES minus EA into bracket 1 plus 0 0.06215 times V. So here 
we have to calculate this value. So in this uh, Mayer's equation, the velocity will be generally measured at a height of 10, million, 10 meters above the ground or the water surface. So here in our case, uh, the velocity is given or the wind speed, sorry, not the velocity or the wind speed. Wind speed is measured at 0.5 meter above ground level. Whereas in the Mayer's equation, uh, we will be considering the wind speed at a height of about one point, sorry, 10 meters above ground level, 10 meters above ground level. Now, since uh, this is the equation, since it is a large water body, and since the evaporation is estimated for one day, the value of this constant C, constant C can be taken as 11 by 30. So 30 is the number of days. Since we are calculating for one day, so this constant value can take it as 11 by 30. Now, the velocity to be used in this equation is velocity at 10 meter above the ground level. So this can be obtained from using a law known as the power law. So it is on the form V10 divided by V0.5 into 10 divided by 0.5 to the power of 0.15. So here we want the velocity at 10 meter above the ground level. So V10 works out to be 39.653 kilometers per hour. So then we know the value of C and we know the value of ES and EA and we know the value of velocity. So thereby the evaporation is about 13.73 millimeters per day. So evaporation for the whole week works out to be 1.442 million meter cube. So next we shall uh, apply or we shall uh, use the Rovers equation. So Mayer's equation we have discussed. The Hartan's equation is also discussed. Now Rovers equation, it is of the form E is equal to, this is a very big equation here. Uh, P, A, P suffix A stands for the barometric pressure, whatever the barometric pressure. And here the velocity, velocity measured at 0.5 meter above the ground level is considered. So here, in the earlier problem, we have considered it a level of 10 meter above ground level, whereas in Rovers equation, so this value of V is nothing but the velocity wind speed measured at a height of 0.5 millimeters above the ground level. Now PA is nothing but the barometric pressure of mercury, that is 752 millimeters of mercury. So now E is equal to, so these are the constant values. So substitute PA as 752 millimeters of mercury. Again, the value of velocity. Velocity, you can see here, it should be taken as 25.3. That is uh, measured at the height of uh, 5 meter above the ground level. That is 25.3. So here, you are not supposed to substitute uh, this one. So in the earlier problem, that is 39.653, we got it. So here, you have to substitute the velocity measured at 0.5 meter. So when you substitute all the values, so the evaporation in that particular day works out to be 17.5 millimeters per day. So the evaporation for whole week is about 1.84 million meter cube. So these are the problems on evaporation. So you may have the pan evaporation values by using the pan evaporation values and the area of the reservoir or the surface of water exposed, you can calculate the amount of water loss to the operation. Now, in the last class, we have also discussed about uh, how to estimate the evapotranspiration. Evapotranspiration is combination of evaporation, or uh, the soil evaporation, and also the evaporation or uh, the transpiration losses from the plant trees. So now, generally, in order to calculate the evapotranspiration or it is also called as consumptive use. Consumptive use is uh, calculated by using one of the most commonly used method, that is the blaney criddle method. So the blaney criddle method is used throughout the world for the calculation of consumptive use or determination of consumptive use of different crops. Now, in SI units, in SI units, the equation is of the form, since we are not using FPS units, so U stands for the evapotranspiration of the consumptive use is equal to sigma K into P 
bracket open 4.6 times t into plus 81.3 divided by 100 so this will be metric units or you can call it as u is equal to sigma k k so this whole term this whole term you can call it as f f or else you can take u as k sigma f or k f so this is the most commonly used equation in order to calculate the evapore transpiration of a particular crop in a particular area now now here in this equation in this equation here u is the consumptive use k is a crop factor crop factor and p is nothing but the percentage of sunshine hours the percentage of sunshine hours in that particular day and t is nothing but the mean temperature the mean temperature in that particular day so here sigma k is a constant so this constant value is known as the crop factor it varies from crop to crop and p is nothing but the percentage of sunshine hours in that particular day and t is nothing but the mean temperature in that particular day now we shall work out a numerical problem so here determine the evapore transpiration and irrigation requirement of wheat crop if the water cup application efficiency is 65 percent and the consumptive use coefficient for the growing season is 0.8 here the value of the crop factor has been given that is the value of k is given that is 0.a from the following table now here we have four months november december january february and here you can see here mean monthly temperature is given and also mean monthly percentage of sunshine hours his values are given for all the months and also the effective rainfall has taken place in the different months now you can mark your attendance in the chat box and we are stopping this session so i'll continue this section in the next class there is some network issue so please mark your attendance in the chat box